Christ, I'm your host, Pastor Long. God is still on the throne. He is still doing great and phenomenal things. I pray that I find you well where you are, that God is still talking to you, showing you, directing you, restoring that which ought to be restored. You know, I my gadget today where I am and the, the light is not good, but we will prevail. Glory to God. We will prevail. God is our strength. He is still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Now, today we are looking at the lessons from Jesus. We are zooming in on the lessons from Jesus. Our topic of study, we've been talking about hearing from God. Hearing from God. There is nothing as important as a hearing God. You know, the voice of God brings faith to us. You know, if we can even go to uh, Romans 10, verse 17. Romans 10, verse 17. God wants us to hear him. You know, we have already covered a lot. Uh, on, on Sunday, I looked at the first institution where we ought to learn to hear the voice of God. I said it's the parents. You know, many people started the church. We don't have to start at hearing the voice of God from the church. Our parents have to teach us the word of God at home. Now, as parents, you know, when I say our parents, you know, <laughs> as a parent, you know, it's my responsibility to teach my children the voice of God. You know, to bring children into the revelation that God is a God that, that speaks, right? God is a God that speaks. And today, I don't even have my gadgets, so I'm using the Bible. You know, when you're using the Bible, you have to be open <laughs> all the time. Now, I want us to look at um, Romans 10, 17, why this is important. Again, consequently, I'm reading from the NIV version. Consequently, faith comes from hearing, right? From hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. The word of Christ. Glory to God. I want us to focus on what he is pointing us to Christ, which is the gospel, the good news about Jesus Christ. And if we focus on Jesus, how did he develop? How did he grow? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ. Without hearing the word of Christ, there is no faith. Remember what faith is, that exchange between earth and heaven. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So faith comes by hearing. We have to zoom in on Jesus Christ. Now, again, if we go to Hebrews, I want us to look at uh, the book of Hebrews, Hebrews uh, verse 1. When you go to Hebrews verse 1, from verses 1, our God is a God that speaks, right? In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. That's in the past. In the past. So that was in the past. I want you to take note what he is saying here. Because it's, it's important to pay attention to what the scripture says. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets. At many times and in various ways. But in these last days, listen to what he says. In these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. That is Jesus Christ. God has spoken to us. So he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he made the universe. Right. So God has spoken to us through his son. If he has spoken to us through his son, I think it would be wisdom to look at Jesus. How did he grow? You know, a church on Sunday I asked a, a question. I said, uh, did Jesus? Grow up knowing who he was. Did he have all the knowledge? Was he the omniscient um, uh, God, knowing everything, possessing everything? Now, Jesus is God, right? because it's very important that we make this statement. He is God. But when he came here on earth, he put aside his divinity. He entered this realm, born of the Spirit, as the Son of God, through the Virgin Mary. But he had to grow up. He had to grow up. Look to 52 it says right i mean look to 52 and jesus grew in wisdom right 
He grew. Now this is appealing to his humanity. He grew in wisdom. Now to grow in wisdom, it means to grow in hearing the word of God. Right? That is what it means to grow in wisdom. And we are learning from Jesus today as he grew. Because I know that all of us want to hear the voice of God. We want to grow in hearing the voice of God. We want to make decisions that are wise. Jesus grew in wisdom. There is nothing as important. This is our year of wisdom, right? There is nothing as important as wisdom. And wisdom comes when we hear the word of God. In our decision making, we make decision all the time. We make decision of who to marry, where to live, whether to quit our work. You know, those are the decisions that we make all the time. Glory to God. When we know the word of God, when we grow in our knowledge of the word of God, the wisdom of God will be impacted on us. So how did Jesus grow? Now, on Sunday, we say his parents, remember Mary and Martha, Mary and, um, you know, Mary and uh, Joseph. I know the story of Mary and Martha. We'll touch on that maybe, you know, sometime when we are looking at this topic. Now, Mary and Joseph, Joseph had a dream that came from God. In that dream, he saw an angel. He says, don't divorce Mary. So Joseph heard from God. Right? Don't divorce Mary. That which she has is of the Holy Spirit. Now, Mary as well, she got a visit from the angel. So God is a God that speaks to us. Some of us, God speaks to us in dreams, in visions, in that small still voice. These are the things that we need to understand. So Jesus, he was in that environment. So he grew up in that environment. That is the first institution. Mother and the father that heard from God. Mother and the father that knew God. Right? At the age of eight, verse 21 of Luke 2, because we are learning from Jesus, lessons from Jesus. How do we grow in hearing the word of God? On the eighth day, Luke 2, verse 21, on the eighth day, when it was time to, be sec to, to circumcise him, he was named Jesus. Right. What they did here, they took Jesus to the temple to present him to the temple. That is the house of God. So I want today to zoom in on the house of God, the second institute where we begin to grow in the word of God, the house of God. Glory to God. So we can either title this the house of God or lessons from Jesus. Now, the parents, they knew where to take Jesus. They took him to the house of God. Right. In the house of God, I want us to take note what happened. Verse 25, we skip everything. Right, Verse 25, now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon. This guy is a prophet. Right, Because in the house of God, you're going to get the prophetic word. You are going to get the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Right, When we go in the house of God, we are expecting to grow. That is the most important thing. Glory to God. You know, this is a command that God has given us even as pastors to help his children to grow. So when we go to the house of God, a corporately, even as a church, we have to grow. Everything that is life has to grow. So when we are not growing, it means we are not hearing the word of God. So that is very vital in, in, our, in our walk with God. How do we grow? So in this house of God, Simeon, who was righteous devote, he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. I want you to take note. Where they were, where the parents took Jesus to the temple, to the house of God, right? There was a, 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 somebody who was full of the Holy Spirit. So in the house of God, you will meet up like believers that are full of the Holy Spirit. So the challenge today is, for those that will listen to this message, the house of God. Right. The first challenge last week, parents, we need to rise up. We need to look at Mary and Martha. Create an environment where our children grow up knowing the word of God. Now, today, we are seeing what the parents did. They brought him to the house of God. Now, this man was full of the Holy Spirit. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. Right? What's this? Jesus is there at the age of eight. There is a man who the Holy Spirit had sent and revealed something. It was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he could not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Verse 27. Moved by the Spirit. Right? So in the house of God, we are going to encounter a move of the Holy Spirit. That's why it's important us who are the house of God, all believers, Let's get ourselves immersed in the Holy Ghost. 
Because, watch this, we will be able to prophesy to those that are down. We will be able to lift up our brothers and sisters. People are going through challenges. When they come to the house of God, they expect to hear God. Right. That is the purpose of the house of God. Now, this is a man who was moved by the Spirit. You know, he was not moved by emotions. These days we have so many emotions going on. You know, one of my theology and the theological um, teachers and lecturers, is, he was just critiquing the Pentecostals. He says, long, you need to be, because I was attending in a charismatic church. He says, I, I believe in the gift of the Spirit. I believe in the power of the Spirit. But you need to differentiate between the move of the Spirit and emotionalism. Right, emotionalism, emotionalism just to shout about him that is not God. This man was moved by the spirit, so we need to be a people that are moved by, by the spirit. Whatever we do, it is the Holy Spirit that has to move us. So, this man was moved by the spirit where in the house of God. So, imagine if I come to the house of God moved by the spirit, you come to the house of God moved by the spirit. Are we not going to grow in hearing the word of God? You will come and say, you know what I got was this. When I was sleeping, I got this dream. I know it was God speaking to me. Somebody will say, I had a trance. I know it was God speaking to me. And all those things, you discover they will have synergy. All those things will be linked together. And then somebody will speak a word of prophecy and say, I God is going to bring restoration in this area of your life. And then we begin to see the gifts of the Spirit manifest. We'll see the power of God. We'll see the healing. Then God will be in our midst. And that is in the house of God. That's what he wants to do. We'll get on this later on. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple court. The temple. See, where did the Holy Spirit move Simon? To the temple court. Where was Jesus? At the temple. Glory to God. So when we cultivate a heart like Jesus' parents, Jesus is eight years, no, eight days old, not eight years, eight days old. Imagine some cultures, eight days, they don't take you to the church. No, you wait three weeks. You know, they say, no, 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 you're not yet fit. But they took Jesus to the temple. Now, when they took him to the temple, somebody got it to move somebody. To bring that somebody to the temple. You know, when we cultivate a heart that we are moving ourselves to the house of God with a right attitude, with the right revelation knowledge of what a church is, what the house of God is, glory to God. I'm telling you, God will always bring somebody that will speak to us. It might not necessarily be the preacher, might not necessarily be the pastor. Somebody will speak to you. Even at the end of the service, you're about to go home. God can bring somebody that will speak to you. And you begin to hear that voice of God. You begin to grow in the house of God. Because if there is something that God values, I don't want to get ahead of myself, it's the house, it's the house of God. Now, this man was moved by the Spirit. So, verse 28, Simon took Jesus in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation. What is this man saying? He is prophesying upon Jesus that this is the salvation of God. Where? In the house of God. In the house of God. Glory to God. See, in the house of God, what happens is your, your purpose gets revealed. Like the purpose of God gets revealed. We begin to grow. There is a prophecy that comes in. The salvation of the Lord in the house of God. Now, in the house of God. Now, what is this? Verse 33. I'm just skipping passages here. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. What was said about him? Because when then we are now in the house of God, what will be said about you? What will be said about us? Right? That is what's going to bring comfort. That's why it's very important to understand what we say even as believers. Because whatever we say as believers, we have to be the ones that carry the anointing. You see, as a believer, I truly believe, remember where we started, when you are born again, there is something inside of you. There is something inside of you that can strengthen somebody in the house of God. So you need to value yourself, value what you have on the inside of you. Simon here he begins to, he is the first one to prophesy upon Jesus. He is the first one to say salvation. See, in the house of God, you discover your purpose, you discover what God created you to be. And if you listen 
to that word as it comes out. You will discover God is there. He wants to talk to you. He wants to communicate with you. Where? In the house. That's why it's called the house of God. You know, in my house, you'll find me. In the house of God, we are meant to find God. Right? We ought to find God. We should be expecting to find God. We should be praying for God to, to have his house. Right? That's another teaching for another day. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Now, then 36, I'm skipping, Simon. I want to go to prophetess Anne. There was also a prophetess Anne. Now, a prophetess. What is a prophetess? Somebody who is a divine spokesperson. That's why I am for women doing great things. I'm for women preaching, women prophesying. Because this is the Old Testament. There was a prophetess. I'm sure that woman, Anna, didn't know she was a prophetess. This is the Holy Spirit even saying she is a prophetess. There are so many people in the house of God. They might not be. Look at this. She's not a Pharisee. She is not somebody prominent. She is not somebody known. No. She is a prophetess. She is not even from the palace. No. She is a prophetess. Probably she didn't know who she was. But the Holy Spirit painted a picture for us to study what happens in the house of God. That in the house of God, there are prophetesses. So that's why it's important when we go to the house of God, watch this, to be humble. Just like the parents of Jesus were. You know, they allowed these strangers to speak upon their son. But to be humble, because they might be a stranger that will speak upon us. But that begins to declare things that will unlock our destiny. We begin to hear God. That, that's the lesson from Jesus. We begin to hear God as we are in the house. Of course. Now, let's find out what the prophetess Anna, the daughter of Phenuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. Look at this. God kept her. For a reason. She was very old. She lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Now, in, da, 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 I like that. Let, 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 let's keep that. Now, coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God. Right? Verse 38. Right? She gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. She spoke about the child where? In the house of God. She spoke about Jesus in the house of God. Right? In the house of God, you can even discover the anointing and the grace that is upon other believers. You start growing. You start, you, you start being impacted. You, know, you start being impacted. Lord, what can I do? Lord, what have you called me to do? You start discovering even your purpose in the house of God. Because God created each and every one of us. Put us here on earth for a reason, for a purpose. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. You are not just here to exist. You are here to live. Glory to God. Right? You are here to do great things. So in the house of God, that's where you ought to be. That's the second institution. Right? You, 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 you get yourself there. You pray, Lord, what can I do? Uh, what did you create me to do? As I go to the house of God, open up my ears that I can hear. I'm telling you, we grow in the house of God. We become better in the house of God. I know what the enemy has done to the churches. I know how he has come in to corrupt the church, to cause people not to go to the church anymore. But I'm sensing that there is an awakening. I'm sensing that the power of God, even in this generation where we are living in, we will see the manifestation of his power in the house of God. Because Jesus is coming back for his church. He's not going to come back for a church that is defeated. That's why we are teaching these teachings that we are teaching, to get us ready for Jesus in the house of God, right? That's the second institution. The word was given. Now, he, he, she said something about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption. What is redemption? So in the house of God, we begin to hear God's plan. What does God want to do? Redeem. What does God want to do? Restore. What does God want to do? Bring healing. That is who he is. He so loved the world that he gave Jesus. So the house of God belongs to him. Remember what he did. He died for the house of God. That was Jesus. So he was to bring redemption. So prophetess Anna here begins to declare the plan and the purpose of God about Jesus. His parents are there. They are listening. They are writing down what is being said about their child. So imagine his parents. When we go to the house of God, imagine even as church members, 
You know, when we go to the house of God, let us not go, now, trust this, now I'm going to go deeper. Yeah. Let's not go with self-centeredness. Self-centeredness is, I'm looking for a way that can bless me. I'm looking for somebody to prophesy on me. You know, I've been stuck in this place for a long time. Now I need somebody to prophesy. No. Go there with an attitude of Simeon. Go there with an attitude of Anna. Be the prophet. Be the prophetess. Be the one that, Lord, Give me a word for somebody. Give me a word that I can encourage a single mother. Give me a word that I can encourage a dad. Give me a word that I can encourage a man who has just lost his job. That Lord, all is well. That you are the God of restoration. As we start thinking about saving others in the house of God, guess what? We are developing our spiritual ear. Because then God will begin to speak to us just as he spoke to Simeon, just as he spoke to Anna. Then when we get into the house of God, what's it? we are excited because we have heard from God. We are excited because we are going to lift up somebody else. Jesus needed that when he was eight days of age. His parents, they needed that when Jesus had not yet gone to the cross. They needed to hear those words. Because as we develop hearing the word of God, guess what happens? When we face trials in the future, because we have been in the house of God, what do you think will happen? We are able to stand firm and resist the pressure from the enemy. But if we have not come to the revelation of the house of God, we have not heard the voice of God. So when the trials come, the enemy appears as if he's winning. The devil is a defeated foe. He does not have power anymore. The only power that we have, that he has, is the power of our ignorance. When we are ignorant. But when we begin to study this text, realize that in these last days, God has spoken to us through Jesus Christ. He wants to speak to you. He wants to tell you how powerful you are. He wants to speak to you. He wants to tell you how great you are. He wants to speak to you. He wants to tell you the anointing that is upon your life. We, each and every one of us, we carry a certain grace. And when we come to the house of God, God, his spirit begins to reveal that grace that is in us. And it is that grace that the devil does not want to be revealed. Glory to God. Because once, once that grace is revealed, then he has no way to, to, to hide. He is exposed. Why does God do this in the house of God? Now, what's this? Verse 39. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned back to Galilee. Now, I want us to really zoom in on verse 40 here. Now, that's what is very powerful. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with the wisdom. And grace of God was upon him. He grew. He became strong. See, when we hear the voice of God, what's this? In the house of God, we grow. We grow. We become strong. And we are filled with the wisdom. This is our, our, our year of supernatural wisdom, right? We are filled with the wisdom. And what's this? And the grace of God was upon him. Why was the grace of God upon him? Simeon in the house of God. His parents, that were the conduit of the voice of God. He was eight. He was eight. They retold those prophecies to Jesus. They told him what people said about him. So he grew up hearing these things. So when you grow up as a child, you are hearing your parents prophesy upon you. You are hearing strangers prophesying upon you in the house of God. What happened? We grow. That's why it's very, very important as God's children to know how to function even in the house of God. We are there to edify believers, to build them up, glory to God. That is the purpose of the house of God, to be edified, to be glorified, that you come out, you are edified. You, you, you feel like, you know, God has been in this building, glory to God. I feel strong. I'm strengthened. Jesus grew. He grew. The child grew and became strong. That is the key. Because most of us, we think, because we have not read the Bible, some of us, sometimes we don't read that Jesus grew. We think, ah, because he's Jesus, he's the son of God, he, he knew everything. No! Jesus grew and became strong. Which means, there was a time that he had not grown, he needed to grow. And where did he go? 
in the house of God, to grow. So when we go to the house of God, we are going to grow in hearing the voice of God, right? That is the first place. Before we talk about dreams, before we talk about visions, before we talk about anything else, do you know many people have visions, dreams, but they, they don't link them with the house of God, right? Many people hear the soft whisper of the Holy Spirit, but the, their attitude towards the, the house of God, right? It might be bad, right? Then there is no growth, right? Let's go deeper. Right. Let's look at how he grew. Every year, what's this? His parents went to Jerusalem to the house of God. Every year they went to the temple. Every year they went to the temple. Right. Jerusalem. Right. When he was twelve years old, verse forty-two, they went up to the feast according to the custom. When somebody says it's a custom, like it's a habit, they are doing it frequently. What is happening to Jesus? He is seeing from his parents. Where are they taking him? To the house of God. Frequently. They are taking him there. It's a habit. They now have a habit. Now, he is growing strong. He is seeing this. He is meeting up people that are prophesying upon him. Now, it doesn't mean there was no corruption. Remember this house of God, this temple that we are talking about. Jesus was about, God was about to do away with it. This was a system that God was doing away with. But Jesus comes under this system. He comes to the house of God. Glory to God. So as he comes to the house of God, we see at the age of 12. Now, at the age of 12, verse 43, after the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. At the age of 12, he stayed at the temple, right, in the house of God. People are going back. I'm 12. I want to go back with them. I don't want to go in church. Who me? You won't see me there at the age of twelve. While these others are playing on video games, no. Why should I go there? But you see, Jesus understood the mystery that is connected to the house of God. He understood that, so he was there. He stayed behind. Why did he stay behind? He did not stay behind for the fun of it. He did not stay behind because he was Jesus. Let's find out. He stayed behind. Like right? he stayed behind. Jesus stayed behind. Now, look at what his parents, they lost to Jesus. Imagine Jesus' parents losing Jesus. <laughs> look at verse 44. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the house of God. Three days. Glory to God. That is the place where we learn. That is the place where we grow. Imagine three days at the temple. Let's find out. Was he preaching? Jesus, right? Was he prophesying? What was he doing in the house of God? They found him in the house of God after three days at the temple, right? Found him. <laughs> I like this. Right. After three days, they found him in the temple courts sitting among the teachers listening to them and asking them questions in the house of God, amongst the teachers. What was he doing? Learning. He was growing. I'm not going to talk about listening because this is a teaching on its own. I'm going to cover listening because that's the third part because we are talking about hearing God, right? This is the third uh, session that we're going to have on Sunday. That's where I'm going to talk about listening. But I want you to take note in the house of God. Jesus was not preaching it was not yet time. Sometimes in the house of God is a time for us to develop to develop those spiritual senses. So Jesus knew where to be in the house of God. He is sitting, he is asking questions. Glory to God. He is developing where in the house of God. They found him there. Listening to them and asking them questions. Look at verse 47. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? This is the man. Why have you treated us like this? Three days, we don't know where you are. They lost Jesus for three days. Why have you treated? This is a mother's cry, right? Why have you treated us like this? Hmm? Let's find out how Jesus replied, right? Why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously. <laughs> now, anxiety had come in. They lost God. The parents of God lost God. Searching for you, right? They were searching for you. Look at what verse 49 says. Why were you searching for me? 
That is Jesus. Why were you searching for me? He asked. This is the key. This is the, this is the point of points in this entire message. This is something that I want us to really, really get. Right? I want us to really get this. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? That's what he said. Didn't you know I must be in my father's house? At the age of 12. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? Because that is the place of growth. The house of God is the house of God. That's why we need to treat the things of God. Really, We need to be diligent in how we treat the house of God. How we hang even the church, how we hang the people at the church is very vital, it's very important. Because you see, this is the house of God. Anything called the house of God must be holy. Anything that is called the house of God, he says to his parents, don't you know I must be in the house of God? Because that is the place where I ought to develop. That is where my father is. That's my father's house, glory to God. It's my father's house. Don't you know where I ought to be? Now, I love this. Don't you know where I ought to be? <laughs> Verse 50. But they did not understand what he was saying to them. They didn't understand. Now, they didn't understand. Now, let's shift gears in the next 10 minutes here and really zoom in on this house of God. They did not understand. This is a powerful point I want to make. They did not understand. Do you know we can go to the house of God without understanding? And then when we go there without understanding, it becomes hard to hear God. We don't have a revelation of why the house of God, what the church is. Glory to God. Because we know there's been a shift, there's been a change. Now, the house of God, me and you, we are the house of God. We are the temple of the living God. So when we don't have that revelation of what it means corporately as believers, that we have been baptized into Christ, who we are in him, we can start his parents here, the ones that gave birth to him supernaturally, that saw the move of God, Mary who was impregnated by the Holy Spirit, did not know, did not understand. So I asked myself, I said, God, why is this? That long you have to have a revelation of Jesus if you want to know the house of God. You have to have a revelation of Jesus to understand the church. I want us to go to Matthew 16. This is a text that we all know. Glory to God. Because you see, until we have a revelation of Jesus, it becomes hard to understand the house of God. You know, to understand why do we do the things that we do? Why do we even bother going to the house of God? Why do we do that? So there are many people again that might be discouraged, right? Discouraged, you know. God is saying, you have to come to that revelation, the revelation of what it means, right? Now, I want to look at verse 13 of Matthew 16. Jesus is going somewhere. He's about to introduce his purpose on earth. Now, when Jesus came to the region of uh, Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? Right? Who do people say the son of man is? What he is asking, are they hearing? Are they hearing from heaven? Do they have an understanding? The understanding that the mother didn't have. Do they have an understanding of who I am? Right? Because watch this. If you don't have an understanding of who I am, you will not have an understanding of the house of God. So it becomes hard to develop your hearing. So the first place where you start, who do you say I am? So that you can have a revelation of the house of God. They replied, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah and one of the prophets. Look at Jesus here. He is about to go to the cross, but they don't know because they are not hearing. Like they are, they, they, their mind are dull. Their 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 ears that they they can't hear. Glory to God. He says their hearts have become hard. The hard, hardness of the heart, so they can't hear. They don't have a revelation of Jesus. Then he turns to them, his disciples. But what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? I'm asking you, who do you say I am? Now, do you hear? Do you have a revelation right, of who I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Right? 
Jesus replied, blessed are you. I want you to take note. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by men, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. So that's what Jesus is saying. I will build my church on this rock, who you say I am. Now, the parents, as much as they gave birth to Jesus, they brought him to the house of God. He is in the house of God. They saw the prophet about Jesus in the house of God. They did not have an understanding. You see, the plan and the purposes of God to have a revelation, even to grow in our understanding, we have to have a revelation of who Jesus is. So here he began to reveal unto this rock, I will build my church. What's this? My church. I will build my church. Listen to what he said. The gates of Hades will not overcome it. So when we have a revelation of Jesus, this is what he said. We begin to understand the house of God. Jesus is the stone that the builders rejected. So when we have a revelation of him, we are no longer rejecting him. Now, it becomes easy to hear him. We begin to grow. When you have a revelation of Jesus, you will have a revelation of Christianity. You will have a revelation of what Jesus is doing. Look at what he says. Upon this rock, I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Spiritual warfare. The gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. It cannot prevail against what I am building. So in the house of God, this I'm building it. So when he builds, how does he build? He built with his word. Glory to God. So when we understand that Jesus is the one that is building, right? Since he is the one that is building, what's this? He's building you. He built you by the way. So when we have a revelation of that, when we come to the house of God, now, we are going through challenges. Challenges with sicknesses. Challenges with diseases. So when we go to the house of God, if Jesus is building us up, what does he say? The gates of hell shall not prevail. It cannot prevail against what I'm building. That is the house of God. So when we come, I want to zoom in on this point. Upon this rock, Peter, had the revelation, I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Right? Whatever Jesus is building, the devil cannot prevent. But for us to understand what he is building, we need a revelation of him. Not just a casual approach. Mm -mm. Just a revelation. A revelation of him will give us a revelation of who we are. Now, let's, um, sometime back, sometime back, um, I planned to do something, right? Uh, you know, I wanted to watch a football match. It was Argentina playing France. And then the Lord says, Lord, I want you to sacrifice this uh, and spend time with me. So I spent time with me, to, with him. As I started spending time with him, worshiping him, and when that time finished, he says, what do you want? He says, Lord, I want to know you. That was what I asked for. You know, I knew that was the Holy Spirit. I won't ever ask for that. <laughs> you know, when the Holy Spirit begins to work in you, you even know what to ask for. I says, I want to know you. Listen to what he says. To know me is to know you. When we know Jesus, a revelation of him, we discover what the house of God is. And then it becomes easy to hear God. Right? When we have a revelation of who Christ is. The last scripture I want us to go to. right? The house of God. right? Remember, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Upon this rock, I will build my church. You are the one that God is building. And he builds with words. He wants you to know his word. And in that house of God, you are going to grow. Did I say last scripture? No. Not last scripture. I still have two more scriptures to go. Three more scriptures to go. But I want to go to um, Genesis 28. The house of God, right? I want us to look at this man who discovered his purpose. We are in Genesis chapter 28, right? Genesis chapter 28. Hey, it's an awesome thing to, to open the Bible. Glory to God. Hey. I haven't done this for a long, long, long time. Now, Genesis 28. This is a story about Jacob. Remember, Jacob was running away from his father and his, his brother. He had stolen a blessing. Glory to God. I want us to start from verse 16. So when Jacob came in from the fields that evening, Leah went out to meet him. Oh, 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 Jacob. Now that's Jacob 30, verse 8. I'm thinking this is not 8. Like, Jacob 28, verse 16, right? Jacob 28. Uh, Genesis 28, verse 16. Jacob 28. Yeah, it should be Jacob because this is, the, this is the story. This is the account of Jacob. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, 
surely the Lord is in this place. Right? The Lord is in this place. Mm. I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. Right? This is the gate of heaven. What was happening there? Jacob came, right? He put a stone. Right? When he put a stone in verse, I want to, us to look at verse 10. Jacob left Bethsheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He put one stone right under his head and lay down to sleep. What's this? The stone always represents Jesus, right? He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven and angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Verse 13, there above it stood the Lord and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. What's happening? He is lying upon the stone, right? Now he gets a revelation of God's plan and purpose for his life, the blessing. He doesn't even know. Remember what I said, a revelation of Jesus will give us a revelation of the house of God. Without a revelation of Jesus, we will continue going to church religious. We won't know why we are going to church, why we sing what we sing, why we preach what we preach. But when we have that revelation of Jesus, the lesson from Jesus at the age of 12, he is at the temple. His parents brought him at the temple because everything revolves around the house of God. Jesus died for the house of God, which is his bride. So Jacob, here he comes, he put a stone. Now to lay your head upon a stone, remember that's the mind, that's the head, that's the engine of everything. Jacob is running away in fear. So he puts his head upon a stone to get a revelation. He starts dreaming. Before this, we have never heard of Jacob hearing God. We have never heard of Jacob actually hearing God. But here today, for the first time, when he's lying upon a stone, a stone which represents Jesus, he, he sees a stairway. He sees God. He sees angels descending. Where does this happen? In the house of God. Glory to God. He sees this. In the house of God, there are angels. There are demons. That wants us not to have a revelation of Jesus and the church. In the house of God, there are angels that are sent to bring healing, to bring restoration, because that is the heart of God. Glory to God. So we need to come to that revelation. Lord, in the what is your house? You know, we have to have that zeal. Time will not permit me to, to, today to talk about Jesus. When he put a cord, right? When he pulled out a cord, he, he, he designed a cord and he went into the table. He started driving out money changers. He says, don't you know that my father's house shall be called the house of prayer? Right? That is the house of God. Glory to God. We have to have a revelation of Jesus to have a revelation of the church. When we have a revelation of the church, our hearing super increases. This man, Jacob, he, he started having a dream. That's the dream. God begins to speak to him. Listen to what God says here. I want us to literally zoom in again. <laughs> there above it stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you your I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. The man doesn't have a wife. He doesn't have any descendants, but God begins to prophesy to his future. God begins to tell him in his future why that's the how that's the word of God. He starts hearing the word of God, right? In this place which appears desolate, no one could even dream and think that place was significant. Him he is tired. He doesn't know that that is the place that God will speak to him. That is the place that God will begin to release his destiny in the house of God. That is the place where he develops, where he begins to see God in a dream, in the house of God. When you go to the house of God, guess what? Prophecy increases. Interpretation of tongues comes into play. The first time I interpreted my tongues, it was 2009, where I was in the house of God. I started praying. They asked me to lead prayer. All of a sudden, I said, that said the Lord, we will sit on, on the shoulders of giants. I even know, and we will see further than what they have seen. Now, I, I was like, oh, what is happening? The gift of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is there because God, the Father, 
wants to bless people in the house of God. He wants people to be encouraged in the house of God. He encourages Jacob here when he's running away. So Jacob hears God. We develop in the house of God. Jesus was in the house of God. He stayed in the house of God. Don't you understand? I must be in my house, in my father's house. Don't you understand? They didn't understand. They didn't know. Peter, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, unto this rock, this rock, that's the stone, right? Now, here it says it's a stone, but I think probably it might have been a rock, you know, maybe he was leaning on a rock and they say it's a stone, right? Unto this rock, I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So when I have that revelation, they say, they say COVID. What do I say? When we go to the house of God, we start quoting Psalms 91. You know, we start declaring uh, all these things that come against us. They shall not prevail. No weapon, Psalm Isaiah 54, 70. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Glory, arise and shine for your light has come. No, we, we come out encouraged. No, not with fear. Because now we have been in the house of God. We begin to hear what God is saying in the house of God. In the house of God, we also begin to interpret our dreams. Man, Time is fast spent. Let's round up. Let's, let's see what he says. <laughs> All peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And your offspring, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. What's it? I am with you. Where is he getting this? At this particular time, he doesn't know. He is dreaming. But God is saying, I am with you. There is somebody who needed to hear this today. Glory God. Because we are in the church. We are in the house of God. Um, it might be an online service. God says he is with you. He is with you no matter how bad the situation is. He is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That is a promise. He said, I am with you. I am with you. I will watch over you. Wherever you go, I will bring you back to this land. In the house of God. Right? I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Glory to God. I will not leave you. What did Jesus say after he ascended to heaven? Lo, I am with you until the end of ages. So when we begin to see him in the house of God, we grow. We, we have that sense of assurance. No matter the challenges, the people that have seen fearful, people that are struggling, people that are not seeing the, the manifestation even of what God is doing on earth, are people that have not come to the revelation of Jesus. When you come to the revelation of Jesus, you are able to bypass what you see on earth, especially when you spend time with him. There is something that God is doing which is greater than what we see with our, 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 our physical eyes. God is doing something supernatural. He said he is building his church. If he said he is building his church, if he said the gates of hell shall not prevail, who is this devil that dares to prevail against you and me? Glory to God. We ought to stand up and say, no, 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 no. Not on our watch. No, we will rise up. No, we will rise up because Jesus is with us. We are the ones that hear God. So we begin to declare prophetic Lord, as we go into your house. You will speak to us. You will declare your mysteries to us. And you will grant us understanding. These are the things that we ought to do. But what the enemy does, what's this? He twists our tongue. So he wants us to prophesy. I call it prophet -like. He wants us not to see what God is doing. He wants us to see, what's this? The dry bones. When we see the dry bones, we begin to speak the dry bones. No, you and I are warriors. We ought to see with the eyes of our hearts, right? Because we are the house of God. The Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of us. Glory. I think I will have a second segment or on this. I, I cannot finish today. So let's round up Jacob. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place. He was sleeping. He says, surely the Lord is in this place. I want you to take note. And I was not aware of it. Think of Jesus' parents. They didn't know. They were not aware that the house of God, that's where Jesus ought to be. <laughs> Glory to God. Because he needed to grow there. He needed to mature in the house of God. Glory to God. He needed to discover his purpose in the house. I hear many people pray. Many of God's children, they are, oh Lord God, if you could, <laughs> if you could help me, if you could move. Lord, I've been stuck here for a No. Have a revelation of Jesus. When you have a revelation of Jesus, you'll have a revelation of the church. 2004, uh, I was in a WC. I shared this testimony when we started hearing God. 
I started talking to God in, in the toilet, right? That's what we call WC in, in, in England, right? Now, that, that was January. I says, God, right? I started talking to you. I says, how will I hear you when you speak to me? Now, I said it was telling me, go to church. And then I started arguing with me, go to church. The church is full of hypocrites. What's this? That's how the devil has painted the church. He has painted the church. He does not want us to have a proper revelation of what a church is. The church is the ecclesia, the called out, called out of, of the world, the house of God, where God dwells, where God manifests himself. That is what the church is. So we need to change our tongue in how we prophesy, in how we speak, in what we declare. I'm the house of God. As I enter into the house of God, I bring the glory of God. I bring the Holy Spirit. I bring the gift of, the, of prophecy. I bring the gift of healing glory to God. Sickness has to move. Sickness has to flee. Why? That's the revelation that we ought to have. Jacob was in the house of God. God was declaring blessings. Listen to what he says again. He awoke from his sleep. We need not to be sleepy. To be sleeping here is also a metaphor. We can be in the house of God and be sleeping and not see what God is doing. So he says, oh, let's open our eyes. to see. He was sleeping in the thought. Sure, the Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. And I was not aware of it one day. God was challenging me with the, uh, you know, correcting me, not really challenging me. You know, my understanding of grace was really, you know, I, I got saved by grace, but immediately I kind of ran away from grace. So he was now showing me the working of his grace. Now I go to this conference. Um, it was in the O2 Arena in, in London. I've never seen anything like that before. Now they were about in, over you ought to, I, I don't know, the, probably over 30,000 or 35,000. I don't know the capacity of O2, but it was, it was full. Now, as I rush in, I was coming from somewhere. Now, the man who was ministering, a great servant of God, as he was ministering at the O2 arena, he is just climbing the stairs. We were in the house of God, in the presence of God. Now God begins to say, I'm showing you grace. I want to show you grace. Literally, I felt people being healed. People started jumping. People started shouting. I was a security yeah, guard there. So I had volunteered to work there. I always volunteered to go in such places, right? Because of this revelation of the house of God. So there was a man who was brought in from hunger. He had stage four colon cancer. Stage four colon cancer is death. It is death. I saw him leaping up jumping up and down, being healed in the house of God, right? And God says, Lord, this is my grace. This is how I function. This is how I operate. That says, wow. You see, in the house of God, we encounter the blessing of God. We encounter the power of God. Now, surely the Lord is in this place, verse 16. He was afraid and said, verse 17, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. That was Jacob. How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. Right? That's where Jesus was. Now, we get an early revelation of the house of God in Genesis. He starts dreaming. He starts hearing God. His destiny is called forth by God while he is running away after stealing a blessing. Wait, in the house of God. A thief, the one who stole a blessing, deceiving his own brother, in the house of God, he gets restoration. He gets dub for his crime. Right? He experiences grace. He experiences the love of God. In the house of God, we grow. We mature. We hear the voice of God. That's where Jesus' parent took Jesus. That's where Jesus was at the age of 12. That's what Jesus is doing. He is building his house. Whatever Jesus built, it can never be destroyed. Glory to God. So, second institution, if we are to grow, it's in the house of God. The house of God, glory to God. And it takes a revelation. When we lay our head upon a stone, that is Jesus. Flesh and blood, Peter, did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Now, because you have this revelation, let me add more. I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus begins to tell the them about his plan and purposes, about his death, after a revelation of him. 
what had happened. Now he saw that their capacity to hear him had increased. Their capacity to hear him had increased. They had a revelation of him. And his rev that revelation led him to tell them about his purpose to build the house of God. To declare that no weapon formed against what I'm going to build shall prosper. Is there a weapon that has been prospering against you? Are there things that you have been struggling with? Have you been facing discouragement of late? Fear not. The Lord is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. God is your strength. He is the stronghold of your life. Arise and shine. Glory to God. You are God's glory here on earth. You are God's house here on earth. You have the capacity to develop, to hear God, to grow in the things of God. Because that is the portion that God has for each and every one of us. Be in the house of God. You are tremendously blessed. Till we meet again, have a wonderful, glorious night. In Jesus' name, amen.